have our headquarters is in tacoma and we have also an office in seattle and one in wenatchee. the seattle office is about twelve people and started that office about six years ago mainly to retain really good talent. the talent is commuting south and so we decided to have an office up there but in the last couple of years we decided to make that more of a business center and so we're really developing our work up there and i'll share a little bit of that. wenatchee started mainly because a couple of people that we really like over there who are really hard workers. if you know anybody from the east side they tend to be really industrious and hard workers and these guys are so we have a wenatchee office and we do some interesting things over there as well including a couple of wineries that i'll share with you. so who is bcra? Uh, we think of ourselves as an integrated design firm which means we have a lot of services that we're providing house. so we besides architecture and interior design which has been our core we added about 10 years ago engineering so we have civil engineering and structural engineering uh, we also have landscape architecture. We, we do this interesting thing called building envelope testing, which is basically walls and roofs, and we um, <coughs> analyze and test and assess envelopes for high-performance buildings. And then we have graphic design. So actually, I wanted to this in case you're wondering. This is what's being built next to Alvarez Mill, on what we call Site One. And so it's an apartment complex with some retail down below. So if you're kind of wondering if that big yellow box is, it's not going to stay yellow. It's going to actually look good. So in case you're wondering. Uh, on the upper left there is a project that we're completing up in Seattle right now, multifamily projects with some of our Seattle work. We have a nice cross-section of work that all these disciplines kind of uh, help develop. So uh, on any given project, we'll have landscape and civil uh, interior design, graphic design, as you can see, in some of our tent improvements. So it's really nice having all this together. The nice thing about that is, as we're uh, serving the client, we're all working together, the different disciplines, with common goals uh, for our client. And so the markets that we serve is a number of markets, uh, education, uh, municipal, federal, and state work. Uh, we do a lot of housing. Uh, recreation of all types, I'll explain that a little bit more. Uh, retail and then hospitality. So some of the images we have here, Children's Museum, um, I'll talk about a little bit more, this is right over here. Uh, some of the fun things that we work on in schools, uh, it's nice having environmental graphics because there's stories that you get to tell about the community. And what's really fun about the upper right image is that's a JDLM school. And you can kind of tell by the, the airplanes. Uh, that's reflecting a lot of the students that, that go there. And their, their parents are employed, uh, work on base, and so it was neat to meet with the community to develop this kind of story about who they are. And then on the bottom left, one of my favorite projects is working out at uh, Kids Zone at the local zoo. So uh, a little more depth about the education market. Um, we do private schools, so Charles Wright Academy on the lower right right there is one of the projects that we did. Um, we do, we're working on a couple of the charter schools right now uh, that are under construction over on Puyallup Avenue in the old Rogers Elementary School. Hopefully they're open by next fall. Um, work on uh, public schools, K-12. So this, this image right here is a, a school in North Thurston that's just now going out to bid. So <clears throat> hopefully that'll be open in 2017 for new students. Um, and then we also work on higher ed. This image over here to the upper right, that's PLU uh, Auditorium, um, adapted for a historic renovation that we did. And then here's an image for the early learning center that we're currently working on right now at the Children's Museum. We believe that every environment is a learning environment. So the things that we kind of learn at the zoo or we learn at the Children's Museum, we actually apply to schools and vice versa because Every opportunity you want to take advantage to be able to help um, educate uh, our young. So that's how we like to view it. One of the other markets uh, that we really enjoy uh, is the retail or hospitality market. <clears throat> so some of the some of the projects are around here, and some of them are ones that I, I was going to show because I thought you'd recognize their names. So top of time, uh, right here is the we helped develop a new prototype. This is the top of time in Issaquah. Uh, there is one being built on 38 here in Tacoma, and so it's uh, going to be opening pretty soon. The fun thing about uh, talk, working with Talk of Time and even Ivers is that um, we got to help sort of revisit the brand with them, kind of update it. They kind of have a cool um, locally, local theme using local <coughs> food and, and local suppliers, and so 
using our interior design <coughs> and our graphics department, I don't know if you can see the images, we're able to help communicate their messaging as well about what their values are and how they source their uh, food and, and how it's healthy. Uh, one of my favorite projects is uh, 14 Hands uh, Winery and Crosser. And um, what, what's fun about that as well is that we help them with their brand and, and kind of designing like a branded environment. So it really communicated uh, sort of the values that they held about uh, how they like to grow their wine and how they like to uh, produce it. And it was, so that was a lot of fun to do that. <clears throat> see, another market is sure. the recreation market. Yes, sir. And the last slide is there. The this one is too quick. So yeah, that's right up here. That was a fun one too. Um, that one had a lot of floral level changes. In fact, if you go there now, I think it's already been there. Uh, we had to deal with lots of uh, ex uh, existing walls and floor changes and stuff like that. So that was really that was a fun. That was a startup restaurant. That was the first restaurant we ever did. And that was pretty One of our other markets is a recreation market. <coughs> so the upper left here uh, is the YMCA in um, Silverdale, Hazelwood. We have the Summer YMCA that's under construction right now. <coughs> uh, one of my other favorite projects is uh, maybe in the Camp Seymour and the Camp Seymour. So you remember the old dining room? It's, yeah, so this is the new dining room. And so that was a lot of fun because um, the dining rooms, you know, serve as multi-purpose rooms. And so it was a, it was a great sort of hub uh, to be developed. And it was, it's nestled into the hillside with nice views of the water. And then um, about 10 years ago, we started working with the zoo. And uh, one of our first projects there was Wild Wonders. So I don't know if you've ever seen Wild Wonders. But that was really a kick because you know, learning about animals and learning about how destructive they can be. And it usually has to do with their body waste. That's the most destructive part. And then claws. And so the materials that you have to use and how you deal with waste and how you separate it and how you, how you ship animals so that they don't uh, conflict is, is, is pretty fun. There's a lot of parallels between that and doing schools. <laughs> Um, so housing uh, is another one of our big markets. Um, in the upper left here is the project we just completed in Seattle. Um, some of the other ones you might recognize, Albers Mill. Again, it's one of my favorite ones uh, because of the historic nature of it. And, well, everybody thought it was going to fall down when that was about 10 years ago. And we had some sort of earthquake and people were thinking, oh, that thing's going to go. But the, the developers that we're working with were really bullish on it. And it was really fun because um, dealing with the historic, and it was a National Historic Register we had to deal with. They had to preserve a couple of the sides of the building and so, so they could look like it's in its natural state. So we really had to develop on the water side and to the south, which is what uh, that part right there is reflecting. And then, of course, the, it falls for some reason under the National Parks District, and so they were dictating to us the type of materials we had to use for some reason. They, they felt like we had to use that kind of material. So if you ever look at the material and go, why did they pick that? It's kind of great. Well, it's because they made it to me. So, anyways, uh, here's another project that I really like. One of my favorite ones, Anna Heights, over by the Grand Cinema. And what, what was fun is that <coughs> actually this image I realized when I put this in there, it's flipped, so if it doesn't look familiar, that's why. But what was really kind of fun is we had to do the one percent of the arcs. So part of this copper fabric. Uh, curtain we put on the side of the screening element became that one percent of the arcs. It's really fun working with that. And then if you're wondering what Proctor, the Proctor project starting to look like, this is the main Washington store in Proctor area. And so uh, as you come along at street level, we're trying to stay to that scale of those materials and the demonstration of the windows. But then as you go above where the residential part is, it kind of has to go. So uh, that's, you know, that's what it's going to be looking like. Um, and another project that we worked on on the bottom left there, that's a commencement that's up in Ruston. So those were luxury condos. That became apartments that are now luxury condos again. So it kind of followed the economy. It's a different life. And then we actually do uh, single family residential as well. And that's a project that we worked on in Henderson Inlet, which is a lot of fun. What's, what's interesting about doing single family residential especially if it's custom, it takes as much time to do that as it does one of these. Because there's a thousand decisions you make. There's a thousand decisions you make here, but it's repeated on each floor, right? So you only have to make it once and you just start stacking. Well, this one, there's no stacking. <laughs> and 
And then um, another one of the markets that we work on uh, is the, for the public or we call nonprofit. But one of the fun things we've been working on lately is, um, I don't know if you recognize it, this is theater on the square, this, this yellow right here, and this is Commerce and Broadway. And, and this is a, that uh, green fountain plaza over by Broadway Center. And so what the Broadway Center wants to do is find a home for the farmer's market. And I think you guys had a speaker here recently regarding the farmer's market. And by combining um, a, a stage, they can do performances when the farmer's market's not there. And, and then when you do have a farmer's market, you have, you have places for them to queue instead of blocking the road. So that, that's a fun project that's kind of in the fundraising mode right now. Broadway Center's working on. Another project that we're working on is phase two of the prairie line. So you know, the, you've seen the phase one, right? How beautiful it is. But phase two will come actually out the front here. So we're, we're currently working on that now. Uh, here's an image of the Children's Museum that we're working on. Some of, some of the things that we've done at the zoo about how to do specialty exhibits and specialty fabrication we were able to bring to this job and work with a lot of the same team members. And then on the bottom left here, under the, the rescue mission, uh, is the Adams Square House, transitional housing, mainly for domestic violence victims. And then we just opened the Timothy House up on the 14th, and uh, yeah, not having to do that yet. It's, up, it's, it's open now. So, um, we like to think of our creative and thoughtful approach to design involves some elements here. Um, one, one of them really is that you know, you're, you're designing custom for your client, but your clients need flexibility. So you have this kind of tension of how do you make the custom and specific for a client's needs, but the client's needs change over time, right? And the way you do, the way you do education changes, the way you do recreation changes, everything changes, so how do you be flexible? So always have this sort of tension between the two that you don't get too locked into something super specific that doesn't adapt to newer uses as you go forward. That's sort of our, sort of our mantra as we go forward. And then um, I want to shift gears a little bit here to talk a lot about what we do. And I want to talk a little bit more about why we do it. Um, we uh, really believe in designing places for people to live, work, play, and learn. And through all that, be healthy. Um, Here's another image, one of my favorite images, again, of um, Camp Seymour. And especially if you contrast that to the existing dining room to, to the new dining room multi-purpose facility, there's lots of natural light, um, doors roll up so you have access to the outside. It becomes much more flexible multi-purpose than the facility that they had before. Uh, some of the fun things you can't really see is we, um, because we do have interior design in-house, and we have environmental graphics in house, we're able to design some custom chandeliers out of um, paddles or canoes, which is really kind of fun. It's kind of a theme that we brought uh, through, the, through the facility. Um, and we do those things so that as a community, so a community of BCRA, but also a community in Tacoma or Seattle, wherever community we're in, we do that so we can connect, we can grow, serve, contribute, and build. So those are sort of the building blocks that we think of a healthy community when it's thriving uh, and able, or enabled to do these kind of things with the work that we do. Here's an image here of, um, this was sort of the vision image for the Portinghams Winery in Crosser. And to the left is a future restaurant, to the right is the facility that actually got built. And we were, we were looking for ways for a community to happen there even in the desert because in, uh, in Crosser, as you know, there's not a lot of there there, you know, it's kind of wide open and they get a lot of wind and, and, and weather. And so we're looking for places where people can gather and have and it's been very successful. We were at an event out there last spring where uh, Tom Douglas helped the barbecue and, and this place was just packed. It was really a lot of fun. So places that we helped uh, that we designed were able to facilitate a really great coming together. And I, I really enjoy, you know, the work on projects. So, therefore, what we do at BCRA has purpose. So this is a picture of me uh, superimposed over a uh, famous architect, Nick Bouzier. <laughs> and what I liked about Kogu is that everything he did, whether you liked this or not, it had purpose. And so this is sort of a symbol of the fact that whatever we do, even if it looks, uh, you know, sort of fanciful, it has, has purpose. It's not superfluous. So everything we do has purpose. Um, 
And then to sort of get you through the sort of rigorous process of design, and fundraising, instruction, and occupancy, you, you should have inspiration. Right? For, for us, as we develop the projects, and these projects can take a couple of years. Uh, in fact, we just kicked off a meeting yesterday. <clears throat> it took four years to get to the kickoff meeting. So we've been working with this client, looking at different sites. There's a YMCA up in uh, Everett. Looking at different sites, different <coughs> process events. And finally, here we are starting. Uh, we, we haven't even started yet. We're starting construction documents. So it's taken us four years to get here. <coughs> so it's important to have inspiration. Um, this, is a, uh, image, oops, this is an image from uh, Reggio and Emilia Italy. I went there a little over a year ago at the Chunks Museum. And what I loved was that um, they treated little kids as adults. So in their education system, the, the kids who were aged nine months to five years old, it's like preschool, um, they're given these responsibilities for self-directed learning and they're just amazing. And what I love is one of the quotes <coughs> one of the girls said was, if you don't change, you get bored from the state of it. What a great quote from the sixth grade. So if we have purpose and inspiration, our work will be purposeful and inspiring. And, and our job then is to then help imagine better futures, help our clients, help our community, help ourselves imagine a better future. So uh, you, there was a quote you were reading earlier about things that matter. For us, these are the things that matter. A lot of ways our work is an excuse to be engaged in the community to help um, solve problems or the needs, but also to help the community institutions. And here's a list of the, um, groups we've been involved with lately, uh, including um, Habitat for Humanity. So here's a, here's a picture uh, of the, the work day we had from the summer. Now, have anybody been out to any of the habitat sites? Has Jason recruited you guys yet to work out? Yeah. So you know what a great experience that is, especially it's a great team building experience. And Jason's really great at preparing a team to go out there, setting it up so you actually have something productive to do. And I know it takes a lot of work sometimes to get something so people feel like they've done something that's productive. But Jason does a really great job at that. Um, one of the things I wanted to illustrate about things that matter is one of the projects that, that we're working on Habitat. And we helped um, at BCRA, part of our giving to them was develop a master concept for a project called the Woods and Golden Given, which is 30 units. Um, it's out by the, <coughs> on the, on the south side of the 512, north side of the North Fork and Golden Given. So it's kind of out there sort of middle. But what was neat is that this property, Habitat Acquired, and it was kind of a weird piece of property. It had this barn in the back that, no kidding, had teddy bears uh, attached to it. It's purple, and they have teddy bears attached to it, like a, I don't know, two feet on the center. So there must have been 50 teddy bears attached to it. So it's kind of weird, you're like, what did, what did we get? And they had a big, in the middle, where we now park, had a big mound of trash. So Habitat got it, cleared it out, <clears throat> and we developed this sort of cottage-style um, living for our, for our residents where your, your lots are a little small and a little closer together. There's no garages. But what you do with the, uh, with the, with the property is you develop a common space where the community can gather. So what's really nice is you have in the middle here about I don't know, half an acre of open space, but we also have uh, a soccer field, and we have a sort of natural wetlands that we kind of enhanced. And we'll have some interpretation and things like that for, for the residents. So it's really a beautiful site. <coughs> and, you can see kind of here the type of house that's being built. Habitat really does first class housing. But sometimes it's a little embarrassing because the houses we build are better than the houses that people live in that are building them, right? Because they're, they're, they're done well, they're highly efficient, they, they don't cost a lot to operate, uh, which is nice for the residents. And so <clears throat> down in here, you can see another work party. And you can see kind of this open space that's right in here uh, where the kids can gather. And we figure, I think, then. In this uh, community, we've got 100 kids, we think. Already there's about 30 or 40, because we've got half the, the homes are down. So it's really neat. What, what attracted me to Habitat, and for me wanting to um, dedicate some of my time, was that they build communities, not just houses. And then one of the other things, and I'll close with this, uh, in 2014 is you know, I stepped out of my comfort zone a little bit <clears throat> and decided to become a big brother is my little, as they call it. And so I've been meeting with him for about four months. 
the Tacoma School District has a great program where you can just go to lunchtime once a week. So that's what I do. Um, you could, there's a couple ways you can do it. You could be the, the community, what they call it, community big brother, where you meet once a week, and then maybe on weekends, once a month, you do an activity. In this case, about nine of us at BCRA became big brothers, big sisters, or students at the car room. And um, like I said, meet with them once a week, just have lunch with them, go and play uh, recess with them, and just get to know them. So I encourage you, uh, if anybody's uh, interested, to contact <coughs> Big Brothers Big Sisters, it's really a great program. So with that, that's about all I have. I guess, any questions that we have?